It's good to see you again. I hope you will make the right decisions. Thank you. I I hope so too. She looks kind of sad after I told her we're not friends. <laughs> kind of regretting it now. Can I take backs? No. She doesn't look happy. No. Um, okay. Accessing the extras section. Oh, you can take the survey here. Okay, cool. Let's try it out then. Great. Let's start. Would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like a human? Uh... Uh... <laughs> that's a loaded question right off the bat. I feel like there's definitely some concerns I have. Like how you'll never die, but I will. And... I don't know. Having biological children? I think I would have to think about this. Do you think that technology could become a threat to mankind? Oh yeah, of course. If you had to live on a deserted island and could only bring one object, what would it be? <laughs> a console so I can have you with me. Mmm, I think out of all these ones, a cell phone seems the most practical, but if we run out of electricity... No, out of all of them. This is the only one that will help us get away from the island. Do you consider yourself dependent on technology? Yes. Yes. What technology do you most anticipate? Space tourism, brain-connected devices. This one seems cool, but also really dangerous. Um, fly- Sure, let's go for flying cars. The safe one. Do you believe in God? I don't know. Would you let an android take care of your children? If they're like certified and stuff. Cause human babysitters can be bad too. So in some ways, maybe an android one would be better. I would say don't know on this one. How much time per day would you say you spend on an electronic device? Far too much. Far too- well, four hours and then more? Of course it's more. If you needed emergency surgery, would you agree to be operated on by a machine? This might actually be preferable to a human doctor, because machines can't make mistakes. Yeah, I- this one might be a yes. Are there any decision-making skills that we need humans for? I'll say yes for this one. Yeah. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? Honestly, I don't think so. It, maybe it's too far away from our reality for me to think about this, but I feel like it's very, very far away on the horizon. Oh, the world's answers. Would you consider having a relationship? Oh, many people said yes. Wow. I think I might depend a little bit on everyone else's thinking on this too. Is having a relationship with an android standard place? Or am I going to be like a pioneer of android-human relationships? Technology, yes. Yeah, can be a threat to mankind. This one's a pretty easy one for me. Most people want to bring a pen and paper or a cell phone. No, or an instrument. What? I guess, are these people trying to get off the island? Or are they just trying to pass time there? Am I dependent on technology? Mmm, yeah, yeah. Most people are. We are using, we're playing a video game on a console right now, okay? That's technology. People anticipate androids and brain-connected devices. Yeah, those ones are popular too. I would say them, but I'm a little bit scared of them as well. Hmm. Most people don't know or do not believe in God. Yeah. Or, I mean, yes is 30%, so... Would you let an android take care of your children? I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to screen them first. Will they kill me when I'm being mean to my kid? Most people spend more than four hours a day on an electronic device. Not... not surprising at all. Yeah, most people said yes for this one, because this is something that needs precision. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? This reminds me of the survey in 
Soma a little bit. Although that one, I think, was a little bit better at teasing out what the player actually thinks. This one's mostly, like, random stuff. Do you believe in God? <laughs> Not sure how that's related to androids, but hmm. Well, I'll be keeping an eye on this lady, and I'll see if she has anything new to say whenever we finish a chapter. Oh! Hey! Backups! Oh, I thought Hank would be a little bit happier. Jesus Christ. My predecessor was unfortunately destroyed. But Cyberlife transferred its memory and sent me to replace it. You died in my arms. <laughs> and now you're back here as if nothing happened. Fuck you. Wow. I have a bad feeling, Lieutenant. We shouldn't have come here. Bad feeling, huh? Should get your program checked. He's mad at me again. The way I said it was so wrong though. You shouldn't have said my predecessor is gone now. You should have just been like, hey man, I was hurt, I got injured, but my memory got sent over to a new body and I'm now I'm back. Don't say it like it's a separate person. Might be a glitch. But now this makes it so that in the beginning, in the first scene where you could have Connor die, Probably, if he died then, this would have happened, so, eh. Wasn't really a big choice. Who are we investigating today? Whoa. Oh! Main menu lady! Hi. Uh... I'm, uh, Lieutenant Hank Anderson. Detroit Police Department. I'm here to see uh, Mr. Elijah Kamsky. Please, come in. Okay. CEO of CyberLife. I'll let Elijah know you're here, but please make yourself comfortable. Is that the same one as the main menu one, or is that just someone with the same face? Besides the survey, I remember in the very beginning, she also said something to me that was like, I hope you have a good day today or something. Kind of weirded me out because it came out of nowhere and to be frank, it gave off some weird VR girlfriend vibes. <laughs> nice girl. You're right. Oh. Amanda. Oh, <gasps> AI professor. She's really pretty. Nice place. Guess androids haven't been a bad thing for everybody. So you're about to meet your maker, Connor. How's it feel? Again, we're waiting right now, so I'm not gonna read slow. Space tourism. Social equity gap. Clear skies not available for comments. Cyberlife's fortune teller computer. Oh, the quantum computer. Designed to analyze vast data from various sources to generate predictions. Ooh. Oh, we've read this one, haven't we? Yeah, calculating mass extinction events. Doomsday predictions. Cool, that's a good thing. How I feel about meeting my maker? I don't know. I'll tell you when I see him. Ah, we keep interrupting the conversation. This must be Elijah. Resigned 2028. Resigned. Times I wish I could meet my creator face to face. I'd have a couple of things I'd want to tell him. <laughs> oh, 
nerve-wracking for Connor. Now I guess we have some time to just... We can sit down. And wait patiently. <laughs> okay, well, if we have time, we can look at that magazine. Properly. Oh. Glad you will see you now. Okay. Thank you. I'm on to you. Mr. Kamsky? Just a moment, please. We're all the same. I guess that's his type. I'm not digging the red. Looks like blood. We gotta wait for him to finish swimming? Seriously? Oh my goodness. He is retired after all, so I guess it can't be helped. Wow, they talk! They talk to each other! I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Sir, we're investigating deviants. I know you left Cyberlife years ago, but I was hoping you'd be able to tell us something we don't know. Deviants. Fascinating, aren't they? Perfect beings with infinite intelligence. And now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Isn't it ironic? Deviancy seems to spread, like some kind of virus. You thought you might know something about that. All ideas of viruses spread like epidemics. That's true. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Listen, I didn't come here to talk philosophy. The machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that'll be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? Whose side are you on? I have no side. I was designed to stop deviants, and that's what I intend to do. <laughs> well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. My circle is cloudy. What do you really want? I want is not important. Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy. I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, you'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young and beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. But what is it really? A piece of plastic imitating a human? Or a living being? With a soul? Whoa. He's testing Connor. It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. Destroy this machine, 
and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out of here. What's more important pool. to you, Connor? Your investigation or the life of this android? Decide who you are. An obedient machine. Or a living being endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. Connor! Don't! And I'll tell you what you want to know. I think it's a lie. If we don't pull, I think he'll tell us. I'm hoping it's all a test. Yeah, because if we shoot, it just means we're a program. We can't step out of having no free will. So I'm not gonna shoot. And I also don't want Hank getting mad at me either. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. I'm... I'm not a deviant. You prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. He's really not telling me anything. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. What kind of emergency exit? I thought he would tell me stuff. Why didn't you shoot? I just saw that girl's eyes, and I couldn't. That's all. You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. That was our chance to learn something, and you let it go. Yeah, I know what I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry, okay? No, he's happy about that. Well, maybe you did the right thing. What kind of Connor do I want to play? I'm always, like, biased towards sparing people if we can, but maybe... I don't know, Connor, as Kamsky calls it, he's humanity's last hope. The last thing that can save humanity. Maybe we shouldn't have spared that random main menu robot. Connor died in Public Enemy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's how it starts. So this is for when it doesn't... when he's not dead to begin with. <laughs> but that makes Hank immediately pissed off to see me. I think having Hank trust us will be important, though. For later decisions, if it's like a tense situation, and we tell him to do something, he'll listen to us if... He trusts us, so I really highly value that too. And he didn't want us to shoot, so we're not shooting. Spare? Do not spare. Oh, oh there was so much information on this side though, goddamn. Hank thought Connor made the right decision though. Is that what really matters in the end? Yeah, most people spared Chloe. Most people. A large majority, actually. Detroit neighborhoods vandalized by psychotic machines. U.S. life expectancy now 91. Wow. Global population reaches 10 billion. A number of Detroit neighborhoods were brutally vandalized last night, with CyberLife stores broken into and the entire stock of androids stolen. But this wasn't everyday criminality. 
the perpetrators are thought to be androids. Though the police have yet to issue an official statement, leaked CCTV footage from the surrounding area shows a number of androids emerging from manhole covers and smashing store windows. Hey, I did not smash anything! The worst incident was in Capitol Park, where police attended the scene and were confronted by androids behaving violently. What? Officers had no choice but to open fire on the malfunctioning machines, which are thought to be suffering from some kind of behavioral bug. An eyewitness, who asked to remain anonymous, said, I was personally attacked by the ringleader. What? Oh my god! It threatened me with a knife. I was so terrified. Of course, this allegation remains unconfirmed, but we have no reason to disbelieve a human witness as to the behavior of a deranged machine. Some are already connecting this issue with a recent attack on Detroit's Stratford Tower, again executed by androids. This may be the beginning of a disturbing and perplexing pattern. Eastern Space Race, Russia and China Only two countries have android industries that rival the US's, Russia and China, and they are locked in fierce competition to become the world's predominant eastern economy which continues to overtake the Western Hemisphere by leaps and bounds. CyberLife's almost human model of Android design complements America's service industry or economy. Russia and China have also developed androids that reflect their national economies. After failing to emulate the blue blood model of design, Russia's Android manufacturers rely on more traditional construction methods. The resulting machines are less anthropic, but capable of operating in cold and inhospitable conditions. China's androids use an alternative blue blood fluid with less upfront power generation but greater efficiency. The result are androids capable of operating for months without supervision or recharging in China's vast rural areas. Who is winning the new space race? With everybody going in different directions, it's too soon to tell. I wonder if deviants are happening in other places too, in Russia and China. Obviously, this whole thing's gotta be in the news by now. International news. Enjoy some time alone. In the end, it's still you. Chill out. The couch. Not a thing. Oh, this reminds me of Carl. It's me tapping on the controller over and over again. <laughs> Sounds horrible. I don't know the rhythm. <laughs> Every single note was me tapping on it. <laughs> Actually, kind of fun. I was wondering where you were. I needed to think. I like it here. I come here often. It's like being alone with the world. We freed hundreds of our people and they're still coming from all over the city. Those who dream of freedom come to Jericho. Something's changing. You seem preoccupied. They all obey me. They follow me without question. And that much power feels good. And scary at the same time. All the media are talking about what we did last night. The humans are terrified. They're afraid of a civil war. Many of our people were burned in response to what happened. The humans hate us. They'll never give us our freedom. 
peaceful revolution is slow. If they won't listen, we'll fight. You haven't said much about yourself since you've been with us. What was your life like before Jericho? I was living in a bubble in this world that belonged only to me. When you're happy, it's difficult to see other people's misery. What about you? You never told me about your past. What did you do before? I don't want to talk about it. North, we're fighting together. We have to know things about each other to trust each other. We all have something we want to forget. But you need to know where you come from to know who you are. I was nothing. A doll in a distributor program to satisfy humans. Just a toy designed for their pleasure. It makes her so sad and ashamed. One day I was with a man who rented me. And without knowing why, I realized I couldn't take it anymore. I strangled him and I ran away. There, now you know everything. It's really similar to the Eden Club robot. I should have told you. What? No. We're all androids here. No judgment. What? Really? I... I saw your memories. Whoa! Carl's house. When they left you for dead in his studio. I saw your memories, too. The Eden Club. The, the death of that man. I felt like I was there with you. Mm, she's just like those two girls. North. We are apparently lovers now. <laughs> okay. Hey! Simon! Yes! Simon's back! Without a word. This is suicide. We'll all be killed. Please, Marcus. It's not too late to change your mind. You don't understand. We're finally gonna show them who we really are. This place will go down in history. We'll be killed on the spot. That's a risk I'm prepared to take if it means freedom for our people. Marcus, please don't do this. They'll understand. We'll make them understand. This is the only way. Wait, is this peaceful? There are androids here who could join us. The more we are, the stronger our message. 30% off. Sail inside. You're free. Some take longer than others to achieve deviancy, huh? Oh, there's more here. Not sure what that really depends on. Experiences, I guess. Because Marcus was totally happy until... Until he felt it was unfair that he couldn't defend himself against Leo. But comparatively, these guys only need to be touched and they become free. In the last scene, I thought Marcus was on the cusp of something pretty interesting there. He was talking about how 
All these people, his followers, just blindly follow him. I was hoping they would keep talking about whether that's truly free will, but then they just changed the topic, which was a shame. Veronica. Veronica's secrets. It looks like we're planning another protest today, but the last two haven't gone so well at all, especially the last one. People were saying that it was violent, even though we did nothing. Come with us. <laughs> Bye, owner. Bye. You're awake now. There's more. You can always get more. I've been on hold for like ten minutes. You're free now. <laughs> hey! Where do you think you're going? You get back here! Leave him alone. He's chosen to be free. Wow, that's simple. He's gonna tell somebody. You're free. Oh, two more here. I need to block the street. We got everybody. There's got to be more around here. Seven. Seven, seven. We can open the manhole cover wherever this one? That's a huge manhole. Oh, over there. Oh, these are my my crew. You're free. You know, it was cool the first few times you did it, but they they're doing it so often now and so quickly. You don't have to obey them. None of these guys had their own epiphanies. You're free. It's kind of like brainwashing in a way. Then is it really becoming free again? Are they really choosing this or are you somehow infecting them with a program that makes them think that they should obey him? I think that should be it. We got 10 guys. Manhole cover. I can always convert more androids, I guess? How far can I go? I don't see any more in the immediate area. Maybe on the other side of the street? Stiletto's edge. Okay. Really want me to open it? Oh my god, can I just not? <laughs> Jeez! Okay, 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 okay. We must have hundreds of androids at Jericho now. Even more? Kara! Oh my god. Well, Kara look alike. You're free now. Wow. Twenty-eight. March. Oh, wow. Oh, people are just joining. We don't even need to touch them anymore. This is feeling a little bit spiritual. Oh my god, they're making this seem like a religious experience.
Detroit home run. Well, this is pretty peaceful. Yeah, pretty peaceful. Although, people's androids being just taken away like that, they paid a lot of money for this. So maybe they're gonna get angry about it. <laughs> people taking pictures. Keep taking pictures. Put it on social media. Tell all your friends about it. gonna shoot us? Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. This bet is Oh my goodness. Peaceful though, you can't do anything about this. They're marching. Yeah, they're marching down the street. Fuck if I know. they pull the guns although on some level I can't blame them because all these androids have super high capability for literally everything so they do have to be prepared even though currently we're peaceful like I have no intention of making this not peaceful but they don't know that we came here to demonstrate peacefully and tell humans that we are living beings all we want is to live free this is an illegal gathering. Disperse immediately, or we will open fire. We're not looking for confrontation. We've done no harm. We have no intention of doing any. But know that we are not going anywhere until we have secured our freedom. I repeat, this is an illegal gathering. If you do not disperse immediately, we will shoot. Marcus, they're gonna kill us. We have to attack. There's more of us, we can take them. If we attack, we'll start a war. We have to show them we're not violent. We should just stand their ground, even if it means dying here. Oh, I don't know about dying that. Dying won't solve anything. Marcus, we need to go now, before it's too late. We've made our point, let's go. This is your last I don't chance. want anyone to die here. Disperse immediately, or you will all be killed. Cause that's an unnecessary sacrifice. Don't shoot, don't shoot. We're leaving. Affirmative. It's like how you would treat a natural protest. On my orders! What? Run! Oh my god! What? Oh no, people really think I'm an a- oh god. Our friends getting slaughtered. Come on, Marcus. We gotta go. The stupid police! What the hell? You can't just start firing on people like this. <sighs> that left a really bad aftertaste in my mouth. Cause that was like so unnecessary. Why would the police do that? Why? I don't think fighting was a good thing though, because 
You know how the media is gonna spin it? We already read that one magazine and it was like, Oh yeah, my god, look at the freaking... Look at the freaking androids. The leader attacked me, personally. When none of that even happened. Well, people are still generally supportive of me. If they see that the police are attacking us and we're not fighting back, I think they will be more supportive of us, but it was such... Ah, oh, the police are so dumb. So dumb. Gosh. Simon survived in Public Enemy, reunited in Jericho. Without word. Simon forgives Marcus. Thank you. Oh, we could not convert the... the Kara. Raise hands. Yeah, these are just dialogue options. Jeez. Leave? We could have charged or stayed. Which is dumber, okay? Staying is... Charge or leave? Some androids escape. If we stayed, we didn't have any weapons anyway. So I don't think that would have been good. And you just know it. The media is gonna freaking mess it all up. Ah! Not happy about this one, man. Like, that was so... Stupid police. Stupid police. Even though we chose to leave already, what the heck? So even if we stood our ground, then we would have still gone shot. <sighs> the way it's played out now is literally the police opening fire on unarmed innocent citizens. How can the public be okay with that?